Hey everybody, it's Nathaniel Dodson from tutvid.com. Welcome into this Adobe Lightroom tutorial for the third installment of From Raw to Glorious JPEG, where we take a raw photo, apply some kind of cool treatment, and process it all the way through. Uh, and all that's left is for you to export it as a JPEG to share with your good friends. Uh, we're going to be doing this kind of nighttime urban effect that I think you're really going to enjoy. I think it looks pretty cool. You see it. Uh, and well, I guess if you enjoy this tutorial, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel so you never miss any photography or Photoshop or Lightroom related tutorials tutorials past, present, or future. And with no further ado, let's jump into Lightroom and check this thing out. I've got this shot here from Pittsburgh that I took a couple months ago uh, for a project I was working on out there. And it's kind of the perfect example of uh, this kind of nighttime effect that we're looking to create here in Lightroom. So it all begins here in the basic tab. And by the way, it's a 30 second exposure. Technically speaking, I shot it at F16. And the reason I did was so I would get that sort of F16 sun starburst effect with all the street lights. A little trick for you if you, if you weren't aware of that. Uh, but I also use the Canon 135 F 2L lens, which is just an amazing lens, uh, but 30 second exposure is what it took. So we've got some great long streaky lines and it's going to be a really cool photo. Let's go here to our temperature and adjust that right off the bat. We're going to go 3000 and you can see it really just cools down all that kind of kind of gunky green, yellow, orangey-ness of the photo, but it's bringing out a ton of blue that's very distracting in the background. So we need to address that in a little bit. Uh, let's push the blue further by bumping the tint toward the purple about 15, so plus 15 in that department. Uh, I'm actually, I think, going to reduce the exposure a little bit. Let's go like negative 0.20. Uh, I'll in increase the exposure. Let's go like plus 15. Uh, highlights, I think, are good. Well, I might maybe boost the highlights a little bit, but I want to be careful because I really don't want to blow out all of the headlights coming toward me. Shadows, I actually want to make them darker because we're going to fade the shadows, so I'm going to make them kind of more inky black so there's more of that inky blackness that'll be faded. I think it'll be kind of cool for our effect. I'm not going to mess with the whites. Uh, the blacks, I think I'm going to begin bringing these up, so I'm going to go like plus like plus 25, right, we'll make it nice and easy there. And then for clarity, let's bump the clarity upward about plus 20, I think that'll be cool. And then we're really gonna push the vibrance up. So let's go like plus 50 in the vibrance department. So we're getting some cool color. We're already beginning to get some neat tones here. Uh, let's collapse basic, let's go into the tone curve. And I, by the way, I'm working not in this sort of linear curve. I wanna go I wanna go for the point curve, right? The point curve linear, I believe is what it, well, linear is just the straight line. I wanna go for the point curve, that's what I want, not the sliders. I wanna take a quick break from what we're doing and just let you guys know if you're into photography, which you probably are considering the contents of the tutorial, I have a Photoshop course all about how to retouch images. There's a link right up there in the top corner, right up there. Uh, if you pick up a copy of it, well, it helps support what we do here with tutvid.com, the YouTube channel, and all that good stuff. And personally, I'd be super appreciative of you if you pick up a copy of it. And who knows, it'll lead to some awesome stuff in the future. Let's get back into this video. So let's get out of basic. We're going to come over here to the tone curve and I'm working with not the not all the slidery stuff. I want this sort of traditional tone curve here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the white point and pull down on it a little bit. This is just going to dull some of those lights, the really, really bright stuff and just kind of bring it back into control a little bit, tell it to chill out. And then we're going to boost the black point a little bit. So this is also going to contribute to sort of the fading or the, the milkiness of those shadows. I think I'm just going to kind of keep it straight like that. I like that. The last thing I'm going to do here in curves is go to the blue channel. I'm not going to mess with red or green. And I'm going to pull up on the very darkest parts of the image. That's going to introduce a little bit of blueness into the shadows, but I want to immediately pull this back into line. I want to just pull a point uh, right there. So that point is bringing it back to like that original point. And just to make sure that we're not sort of adding yellow to the rest of the image, I'll pull a point here and just try to, you know, sort of pull a little bit closer to back being in line. Maybe I'll pull it a little bit like that. That maybe is a little bit better. Something like so. I'll collapse a collapse tone curve right there. Because next we're moving along to HSL, and here under HSL, I'm working in the all sector. You could work in hue, saturation, luminance, one by one. I'm going to go with all, though, uh, because what I'm looking at, number one, is we're going to begin with the hue, and we're, we'll slide through kind of chronologically here. But what I want to do is begin shifting the reds in this photo to be a little bit more pink. And you can see primarily what this is going to affect is the tail lights crossing this bridge here, right? But it gives us a really, like, rich pink-orange look. I really kind of dig it. In fact, I'm going to take the orange and push it a little bit more 
toward red, just a little bit, maybe like negative 10. I think that really just sets that off a bit. Uh, let's grab the yellows and push them a little bit more toward orange. We'll go like negative mm, 25 ish. It's going to just add a little bit more orange yellow to the roadways. I also have in the back of my mind, Pittsburgh, like all their sports team colors, it's yellow and black. So I really uh, like here on the green slider, I'm really going to push that back toward yellow because I want to make sure that there's not like a heavy green cast on any of the roads. I would much rather like see the bottom of the overpass. I think it's cool that it looks so yellow. It's very Pittsburghy, but I want to be careful and make sure that like the green in the tree here doesn't look, you know, completely yellow or red or anything, you know, off putting that kind of aqua green still, I think looks kind of cool. And then in terms of aqua blue, purple, magenta, I don't think I'm going to mess with any of them because down here in saturation, I'm going to immediately desaturate all the blue, purple, and magenta in the photo. You can see how that instantly neutralizes all that stuff going on back there. It gives us a much like more epic looking, almost like borderline cinematic, uh, less distracting image because all that distracting color is gone. And what I'll do is I'll bump the red saturation a little bit. Let's go like plus 15, plus 16. I'll bump the orange saturation a little bit. Let's go about plus, I don't know, plus 30-ish. 35 something like that just again going to draw more attention to these roadways and let's bump the yellow as well so i'm going to push that up maybe like plus 40 something like that i think will be cool a uh, green and aqua i don't think i'm going to mess around with if i push green the problem with pushing green too much is i'm just afraid of that whole green instead of yellow vibe but i am interested in what it would do to the trees not too much though i'm going to leave green at like plus nine that's fine and aqua i'm not going to touch all right so here for luminance let's uh the the roadway here could stand to be a little brighter all these tail lights so let's yeah, let's go ahead and brighten up the reds a little bit. I mean, we'll go like plus 40 for them. I think that'll be cool. And the oranges need to be brightened up as well. So go about plus 40 plus eh, plus 40 ish. Yeah, something around there works. And we'll do the same, I think, with yellow, because again, it's going to bump up the brightness of our roadways. I'll go about plus 40 for that as well. Nothing needs to be super crazy exact here. And I think to bring out some of the buildings in the background, now that the blue is gone in a less distracting way than the blue would be to boost the, the brightness of the blues. And you can see all that stuff that used to be blue will still be brightened up. So let's go like plus, I don't know, 45 plus 50, something like that. I think that works. So at this point, we have the base of our image set. I can come back to the tone curve and go back to RGB and say, you know what, maybe I'll pull up, make the highlights a little bit brighter, and I'll pull down here. Uh, this will in introduce a little bit more contrast through like the mid-tones of the image. I think that's kind of cool. Uh, we could also come down here to lens corrections over in the manual tab. Uh, typically with a long exposure, nighttime type photo where you have a lot of like the high, the high contrast edges where you have a very bright light going to very dark areas, you could get some defringing or not defringing you could get some, some fringing and you could attack that now this is a super high quality lens again the 135 f2 from canon super high quality lens so we're not really getting a crazy amount of defringing but i'll still just bump up maybe like a seven amount on the defringing uh, but i do want to be careful that i don't detrimentally affect the color in any other part of my image uh, but you can do that you can also by the way go into profile enable your profile corrections in this case the 135 barely has any kind of distortion so it's not going to change too much uh, i'll collapse that Hey, I want to jump in here real quick. If you guys aren't following me on Instagram, if you'd take a moment, I would be super appreciative if you go over there and follow me. My handle is at Tutvid. There's lots of cool stuff over there, and I have a daily show that I do live on Instagram and only on Instagram that you can check out over there at Tutvid. Thanks so much. Let's get back into the tutorial. We could also come up here to detail, of course, with any image, you're going to want to sharpen it. So I'm going to select, let's target this roadway right here. Hold down your alter option key when you're using any of these sliders and, you know, we can get rid of all the color and take away the distraction. That actually looks really cool as a black and white, doesn't it? I'm going to crank up the sharpness here, maybe to about 80 or so. Hold down alter option with the radius and we can really see uh, the edges that Lightroom is going to target with the sharpening. Same thing here with detail. We can increase or decrease the detail, increase it a little bit. And then important here is the masking because we really don't need to sharpen anything down in the shadows and we are getting a little bit of like bad noise down there not bad noise i say bad noise in terms of like noise that shouldn't be there it's not like a, a finishing grain that we're applying so hold down alter option and just constrain the sharpening to all the brighter areas of the photo where we see the detail and the roadways and things like that uh, and that's just a nice little touch that we can apply something else we can do is here in effects maybe we'll throw a little grain on here we want to be really super careful with the grain i'm going to zoom into 100 percent if we start adding too much grain very quickly it's going to look really really bad right you see how it just looks like now we have a bad photo so with something like this we probably only want to do like four or five in terms of the grain uh, that's going to allow us to have a nice finishing grain but still not be like hey why is my image all noisy 
And then last but not least, you can come in here to camera calibration and tweak things a little bit. So we can take the shadows and say, you know, make this all a little bit more purple. And you see, then we get this kind of crazy effect. Or you can go the opposite way toward the green, and then we start to get sort of get this urban grungy look again. If anything, I'll tip this toward the purple just a little bit. You can do the same thing here with the reds. Maybe, yeah, go ahead and really increase the saturation of the reds. Make the reds a little bit more pink, or maybe make the reds a little bit more orange, depending on what you're looking to do. Uh, in this case, I really just want to be careful. I don't want to go too extreme. And then you can do the same thing here for the green. Increase or decrease the green. I think I actually like if we bump the green up a little bit. What happens if we shift the hue of the green? Which way do I like it more? Uh, I kind of like it a couple ticks in the positive direction. And then the same thing here with blue. So either increase or decrease the, the saturation of blue. And then you can actually shift the blue hue as well. So I think in this case, I'll go negative blue hue a little bit. We can hit the little toggle switch before camera calibration and after camera calibration. I think it just added a little pop of color, a little pop of contrast. Speaking of contrast, maybe we'll come in here, add a little dehaze, right? It's all about just having a little bit of fun with it, see what works, uh, see what doesn't. And we can see there's before dehaze, there's after. It's a super duper subtle effect. And you can see you get a pretty cool photo. I'm just going to bump up the bottom thumbnail here. Let's right click and create a virtual copy. And here on the virtual copy, we'll right click, go develop settings, and just reset it so we can see just a very, very easy before and after. So there's the before image. There's the after image with everything we've taken this through. And you know, you post this image, the focal point very clearly is this big roadway and bridge cutting through the heart of Pittsburgh so beautifully, so wonderfully. Ah, you just got to love it. So. For working in Adobe Lightroom, creating and tweaking and customizing, applying this treatment to this photo in yet another edition of this raw to glorious JPEG. By the way, to convert this to actual JPEG, just right click here on the, the image thumbnail, export it, save it as a JPEG, easy peasy, no big deal. For all of that and more, that's it. Get it, got it, good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.